Retro Gaming Roundup. Okay, folks, I'm finally going to hopefully do a complete playthrough of Steel Battalion. Uh, I've had this game for a number of years and vaguely re recollect getting to mission 8 or 9 in the past, but never sort of all the way through. Uh, so we're going to do it, and so some of this will be me going over fresh ground so I can at least talk a bit of knowledgeably-ish at the start of the series. Um, early missions, I mean they're fairly easy anyway, I know them fairly well. Later on it's going to be going into unknown territory so it could be a bit more interesting, a bit more of a learning process for everyone involved. So without a further ado we shall start a new pilot. Gonna put my name in. I can't remember how many it lets you put in. I'm going to try and go for the full random Dave. Ladies and gentlemen, you should never go full random Dave. Some sort of indication of... Oh, hang on. Uh, uh, uh. Do you know what? I do apologise, this is probably not much fun for you guys watching as I struggle with this controller to put my name in. So yeah, as you noticed, if you're not aware, it's got its own bespoke custom controller. It's got a lot of buttons on it. There are three foot pedals, kind of like clutch brake and accelerate in a car, except that the clutch pedal is a dodge butt pedal and it will dodge depending on which way you are pushing if you're going forward and not moving the body i think it just goes straight forward in a forward dash which is handy in conjunction with the super punch type weapon that you get later on uh, but if you're sort of moving side to side with the main body uh, that is fine for my birthday actually what's today's date let's do that uh, it is the 15th of March. Are we in... We are in... Non-European type... Date format. Uh, so yeah, if you're moving left or right with the... With the torso, then it will dodge left or right. And you do a kind of a, a, pa a little power slide juke. Very useful later on. Uh, when the enemies have better weapon guidance systems uh, so you'll need to dodge out of the way of homing missiles and things like that uh, yeah lots of buttons I'll try and explain them as I go through uh, assuming I can remember what I'm doing some of the washing and the fire extinguishers uh, changing the main weapons and some of the sub monitor and map controls I'm definitely going to fumble with this stuff, the night scope, the override, uh, the manipulator arm, forecast shooting system, again, not going to know where they are in the heat of battle. Uh, I do seem to remember loving that override button. Uh, it's basically a, like a turbo boost. Um, and it uses up tons of fuel, uh, but later on you can carry multiple fuel tanks and you can also resupply mid-mission so there's some situations where you will need well certainly I feel like I like using the override button to run away very fast from things that are dangerous uh, and it's quite good fun that does mean that you get into some instability turning and the they're called uh, the VTs vertical tanks uh, I was going to call them Wanzas, but that is front mission terminology. Uh, if you start to tip over, either from a large blast uh, hitting you, or running into a like up and down a slope and being top heavy, or if you're in override or fifth gear full chat often as well, and you try and turn too sharply, you'll start to tip over. Uh, you can hit the dodge button, and that engages the auto right writing mechanism, and will sort of 
prop you back up and stabilize you again so there's some uh, really cool nuanced stuff so you can I, mean, I would have loved to have played line of contact which I never have done against humans because uh, I bet there's some real good high level play of running full pelt around and sort of you know keep using the dodge to keep stable as you're outmaneuvering everyone uh, against the AI in this especially early on until, until I find my legs again and uh, most of my dodging and funky movements are just going to be moving the torso 90 degrees to the legs uh, so I can essentially walk sideways uh, by going backwards and forwards uh, and use that to sort of walk forwards to pop out behind a building, shoot someone and hide behind a building or be going forwards as they shoot at me and they will shoot sort of to lead uh, to sort of aim where I'm going to be uh, so then I'll hit reverse and go start going backwards and their shots will miss me. That's the basic gist of uh, I suppose it's kind of dogfighting but yeah like VT to VT combat which a lot of this game is as I shall explain as we go through the mission so I'm going to be quiet for a minute because we're going to get some actual voiced cutscenes uh, so I'm going to hit normal and it's going to load in pretty quickly thanks to the Xbox's caching hard drive he says as it actually takes a little while this time and off we go enjoy As you can see, set in the far future. So, you must be the new recruit. Huh? From today, I am your instructing officer, responsible for your VT training. In the following six months of rigorous training, you'll be pushed beyond your limits. When this is all over, you will be the best there is. So you can thank me when I'm busting your powder fresh ass. Is that understood? Understood, sir! Now, follow me. I'll show you around the garrison. Yes, sir! So it sounds fun. I'm a new recruit. Excellent. This is hangar. What's the matter? Sir, may I ask what the VT is called? I've never seen one like it, sir. The M7 Decider. I'm sure you've at least heard the name before. The next generation VT that will replace the existing models. It's now being tested here. But already it has shown results that far surpass its predecessors. If you prove yourself worthy, you might be piloting one someday. We're moving on. Huh? Sir! Over there is the simulator room. You'll spend at least eight weeks in there before you can hop into the real thing. What? What the? Oh my god. Oh, god. So, no one noticed these guys just, you know, creeping up on them until it was a bit too late. Probably uh, employ some sort of radar or scouts or something. Lookouts. Sir, are you all right? Damn it, my leg. Ugh. Sir, is the VT in the hangar operation? What? What are you planning? I'll pilot it. Hold them off, sir. Uh, no, that's insane. You don't have the qualification to pilot a VT, uh, let alone an experience with it. I think I can do it looking at the manual, sir. Trust me. No! Wait! This is the manual, by the way. That's not all in one language. I will be referring to this manual throughout this. I'm moving out! Start the engine! What? What? You must be crazy. So basically I my fumbling around is quite apt for this rookie pilot who hasn't got a clear what he's doing. So we're now on it. We need to close the cockpit hatch. So this is the startup sequence you will go through every time. Love that noise. That 
ding reminds me of like classic Max. So hatch is closed and we're looking at a video screen essentially. Uh, gonna hit ignition. It's gonna boot up and we need to initialize these systems. Uh, we then get a matching display in a second where bars will come up for the five systems and I need to hit the start button as they cross the, the sort of three quarter line like so and we're off. Once this gantry's got out of the way now some cheeky monkey is uh, stood right outside shooting into the hangar so let's get moving and shooting at him. Uh, I'm using the 315 millimeter smoothbore rifle which is a pretty rubbish, bit. well I couldn't exactly dodge that so that was nice of the game wasn't it? Uh, but here's destroyed, uh, yeah the smoothbore rifle it's it's reasonably powerful I guess but it's got no sort of advanced aiming capability um, so the main point of most of the missions is really you ignore the yellow targets which are tanks and foot troops you can shoot them get a few more points uh, but you want these big orange markers on the map uh, are the enemy VTs so obviously you want to be shooting them so I'm going to hopefully sneak behind it pop out and shoot at him uh, oh I've just shot the building We'll not worry about that quite. Oh, the building is collapsing. I'm just going to use first gear and reverse, alternate, lovely stuff. His mate is around here somewhere. Apparently his mate just blew himself up and saved me the trouble. That is actually the quickest I've done that because I've never had that happen before. But do I look awesome? That is a fucking sweet mech. Look at it. That was so quick, I might roll this video straight into the actual first mission, um, I think. That should be pretty, pretty quick as well. I'll let you listen to the uh, tune as it's about to drop and the titles. I can't remember what day the first one was. Okay, hyped up and ready to go. So it seems some sort of fake Pacific region UN, one of the, I suppose, countries or forces that were made built up part of that. 
decided they were going to turn against the rest of them and they've tried to destroy us. Uh, so the objective for this... Oh, this isn't... Is this... Well, we'll see in the mission briefing. Uh, this isn't... Ah, that's why I didn't... Un so the other day I was having a quick check of systems and uh, I went to do one of the missions. Actually, maybe that was the next mission that I was confused with. This one's quite cool. We'll go into the mission briefing. I'd say it's quite cool. It's pretty pretty uh, standard fare, but it's a good introduction. Uh, so, all right, gentlemen, listen up. Our battalion will now begin our amphibious operation on the coast of Shawan Haishindao. As you can see, that's us on the left landing by boat on the ocean there are some uh what are they called sort of just beachhead ish inland fortresses uh, the operation will commence early today at 0400 at 0530 after the preliminary bombardment by the 8th joint mobile unit vts will be sent out from the assault landing craft to strike the enemy garrison troops there will be three enemy platoons near the landing point consisting of VTs and mobile cannons. In addition, it's reported that the Shawan gar garrison troops that occupy the coastal area consist of a tank troop and two coastal gun batteries equipped with eight 48cm guns. Although there seems to have been no increase in enemy strength, there may be some potential resistance from the coastal guns and field battery units occupying the northern coast. Until the enemy forces are eliminated, our supply battalion cannot land ashore. This means you will not be able to receive any supplies until the beachhead is secured. Watch your fuel and your ammo consumption. As for your position, starting from this operation, you will be belong to the Oscar platoon, you are Oscar 3. Rumour has it that you destroyed two vits on your first time. We're counting on you, best of luck. I certainly did. Um, so yes, we've got these large fortified gun uh, batteries that we have to shoot and also there will be, there's proper VTs and then these smaller sort of guys that look, I think they look cylindrical and they shoot missiles and I think they were a pain in the ass but very weak. So uh, I vaguely remember with this we sort of go along perpendicular to the gun battery, shoot a few of the guns as we go along until we go around the back, take out some of the VTs. Uh, that was my general plan. I imagine it says unnecessary for reinforcements. We can't actually get reinforcements. Oh no, that means buying new ones as after you've died. None of these conflicts are interesting. Can't set up. Oh, it's on the next, yeah, here we go. The next level we get to change loadouts. I might give myself two... Can I do any... I can't change anything at this point. All right, arms, yep, excellent. So the machine gun's pretty rubbish, I think. But, unfortunately, I don't have enough weight capacity. Uh, which we'll see in the bottom left. This, each one VT, one's a VT frame has a weight capacity that it can take. Obviously heavy VTs can take more weight capacity, but they will be slower, less mobile, use more fuel sometimes. Uh, this, this, is the, this is a plasma torch. This is a close range weapon. This will not be useful. I'm gonna ditch this. A light machine gun, again, not really going to be that useful so if I can save weight which I can't because there's nothing else I could put well I could put smoke on which is lighter at least uh, so my current is 12 uh, another smoothboard just puts me over the standard so you've got a standard and a max uh, standards like you know, you sort you, you get into 90% capacity. This means you will start being top heavy. Uh, you will use more fuel. It's but it's not over your max, so it's not impossible. You know, you, you've still got power for it. It's not going to cause you too many serious problems. For this mission, I can probably get away with it. I'm going to go for it. I'd rather have more uh, anti anti armor. Strong. Oh, well, there's two fuel tanks. And do you know what? I don't need fuel tank. Two fuel tanks. 
that means I'm well within my weight so I can probably put this machine gun back on might use that mop up a few tanks uh, ground troops as I'm from the landing embarking from the landing craft into the battlefield itself usually the way this goes for me you know mop up a few on the way until you start to engage the VTs and then ignore all the small things although some guys might be running around with missile launchers that you probably want to take care of um, so bear, I might have to bear that in mind later if I'm getting blown up and I can't figure out where they're from um, but yeah generally it's just for a few more points here and there I think but as I'm on my way to engage the proper enemy obviously the full VTs and the, the sort of the, the lightly armoured sort of gun gunny rocket turret type dudes they're going to be the ones that are going to do the serious damage to me uh, damage is there is and the, sort of the bottom monitor that says front view uh, which I can change here uh, to the left of that are four yellow lights that shows your health uh, you can regain health with a supply helicopter but uh, generally it's basically four, four hit big hits and you're a gunner here's the rest of my platoon I had to wait for them to get out of this landing ship before I could do anything which is why I didn't do anything uh, so if we're going to try and shoot some people I might zoom in this front view no that's the monitor the map that's that's good though the oh, that's the main monitor ah oh, that's the how I remember now we zoom that and shoot some people uh, there is a rev gauge somewhere which I need to pay attention to for gears uh, so these little small green boxes they're going to be smaller troops and you can use the sub weapon gun to take them out oh that's interesting what have I just I've just walked into something so let's you know what I should probably talk less while I'm playing this let's try and so while we've got these guys so the, the idea of this one is uh, it was to defeat 75% of the enemy's forces which uh, includes the guns I'm fairly sure someone is shooting at me from over here which is probably these big cannons as you can see my dudes are doing pretty good job of backing me up yep definitely cannons shooting at us so I've completely lost control there we go not control but my uh, ability I'm locked onto him still so this is interesting, so I'm locked onto him, my main weapon, but my sub weapon was still free to move around. I'm just crushing it at someone else. You can't lock onto these guns, so if we zoom in, we can... Oh, he's shot right at me. Luckily I can take a few of these. Uh, where's my... Oh, okay, this gets pretty twitchy, this aiming now I'm zoomed in. You can see the gun there, so we're going to line up. Send a thing in there. Bonja. What the hell does Bonja mean? Let's do this guy. Yeah. Nice, nice. Nice, nice. Anyone else? Let's zoom out a bit. So a lot of this becomes like patting your head and rubbing your stomach. If anyone's familiar with that turn of phrase. I don't know how regional that is. Uh, there is alarms going, which I'm not on fire. I'm not got a dirty windscreen. I think that's just there are people potentially locked onto me and or shooting at me. But I'm not worried. They don't look like the uh, enemy VTs look on the radar to be behind the main battery. I seem to be not having too many difficulties with people trying to shoot me so I'm gonna keep picking these guys off back up my team oh nice work saves me the effort right a couple of VTs around the back let's go and have a go at them where am I facing 
place in that way. Oh, you're still shooting at me, you cheeky fucker. So it's, it's really quite cool, you've got independent aiming and movement and right, I need to stop moving, speaking of moving. Oh, I've lost where that guy is now. Uh, yeah, and view, uh, which is all very fun, I think. Is he that guy? Let's close that monitor quickly. Oh. So yeah, it's brilliant this. Everything you, you could think of wanting in a simulate, a fake simulator of an imaginary thing, it's all there. Uh, oh, let's take that gun guy out quickly and then we'll abandon this plan because not being massively used. Uh, weapon ammo, that's a good thing to talk about. Uh, so at the top right there is the main weapons and you can switch between them there's three potential loadouts and the ammo count is obviously that number below uh, the three green lights are magazines so this weapon has got three magazines let's go back into first gear what have I walked into this is what I'm, I'm hidden behind something that's why I couldn't see what's going on what a mess um, In fact, I very much lost my bearings there, didn't I? Because that's where that gun was that I was trying to shoot, wanted to shoot at. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, there's three magazines for this weapon. So there's a magazine change. So as you run out, you can switch to the other one of the other magazines. That isn't a gun. Uh, get a flashing light here just to remind me as well. So there we go. We've changed. We've got 20 bullets from the other magazine, my own weapons in my way. Where the hell am I pointing? I'm going backwards, that's why. Right! Let's get round the back, shoot their VTs. I think I could probably finish this mission off anyway, just shooting the VTs and not having to shoot any of these big cannons, but why not while I'm here? Uh, I'm going to have to zoom in on this fella. He's poking out there. Oh, where is my gun? Apart from in my way. So the little monitor becomes useful when you're doing stuff like this because you need to be able to see where you're actually going uh, which you can do with the little monitor while you're messing about with your main monitor shooting things so that's good there's two of my guys in blue squares big blue squares that's friendly VTs they look to be engaged as an orange Thing on the map up there and there we go we've got a lock on check I'm not gonna hit my guy he's not gonna get in the way of my weapon just shot it over his shoulder lovely stuff let's chase this guy down he's focusing on shooting them there we go and there's another one somewhere that's him Someone is actually shooting at me now, I think. Mofos. Fortunately, squad mates are on hand. Oh, that's a, I took a big shot then. Oh, and another one, what is shooting me? That's probably that one of the mobile things. This is bad news, I've got one health left. I need to get out of here, and I'm falling over. And I didn't hit the dodge fast enough. And I'm skidding along the floor. Oh, this is bad, kids. Uh, we need to wash. Oh, I'm right. Okay, that went wrong. Very wrong. And I didn't eject in time. So generally, when you get down to one thing, you should probably flip over the uh, flip open the eject protection because my save file is now deleted. So this is something that happens with Steel Battalion. Basically, it's a, quite a Kojima move, really. Uh, actually, no, I'm not completely... I, um, yes. Maybe it does completely... Do. We'll find out. Because uh, it might have just destroyed that VT and I have to pay money 
to buy another one to try again. And then if you run out of money, you run out of money. No, hang on. No, because you eject. Yeah, you leave your VT behind when you eject and then you carry on. Now I've been killed, killed. I think I'm completely dead and my save game will be deleted and we'll have to start again. So uh, what I'll do for the next episode is uh, he just gives you tips, you know, don't get shot like a knobhead. Uh, game over. Uh, so the next episode, I'll skip the intro. I'll do that in my own time. And we'll go back into this mission. I will try not to talk as much and actually finish it. Seeing as this is the uh, the first mission, I should probably have got through it a bit better. So if we go to the listed pilots now, you will see that there is no random Dave there. I have been actually killed my save game is deleted so what an opening episode what a way to do it introducing you to one of the fun things about steel battalion there the fact that it deletes your save game if you don't get out of the battlefield so that was the thing that yeah got used to that uh early on before and so i'd be ready to eject and i'd be able to eject uh, it's kind of a cool animation you sort of you know camera pulls out as you're ejected out the cockpit uh, but then like I say your VT is destroyed on the battlefield uh, you will then have to buy another one uh, out of your funds so where I've said killing tanks and things is useful for extra money that is basically so you can keep buying more VTs because the where you get stuck and die and not able to go any further is the point where you've died and you've got no more money to buy a new VT to try again. Uh, so that is the two ways this game can end your basically your campaign playthrough. Okay. Well, thanks for watching that. If you've stuck through to the end, and we shall uh, pick this up again in the next episode. Cheers guys.